All right, Larry Kruger here at Levi Stadium from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video as we break down everything that happened down here in Santa Clara. Check out Pig and a Pickle, two locations, Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. or until they run out. And this video is brought to you by Mancini's Sleep World, a proud sponsor of the Krug Show. Mancini's offers a 120-night guarantee with a range of brands and price points. I'm loving my Mancini's bed. It's awesome. With Mancini's, you get free next day delivery. Click the link below or go to sleepworld.com and find a bed that works for you, whether shopping online or in store. Use the code KRUG10 and get 10% off. That's right, K-R-U-E-G-10, and you'll get 10% off in store or online at sleepworld.com. Well, the Niners, fresh off of a loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, have one more game before the bye week, and it's Sunday night football against the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys have the number one special teams unit in the NFL, and the Niners are struggling bad on special teams. So that is a third of the game that probably is going to favor Dallas coming Sunday night. Now, the Niners worked out some players this week. They worked out Gunnar Britton, an offensive guard, Kellen Deesh, um, the former ASU tackle, uh, Dieter Eiselson, um, a 28-year-old center, and Teron Jackson, a defensive end from Coastal Carolina. And they signed Dieter, um, uh, Dieter Eisden, Eiselden, or Eiselden, I should say. Um, and he is a player who was born in South Africa, who, interesting guy. He went to uh, high school in Connecticut, and then he went to college at Yale. He was a two-time first-team All-Ivy League player there. He got a degree in economics and a second degree in political science. So, like all people graduating from Yale, he's very, very intelligent. Uh, the Bears took him as an undrafted free agent. He's had a cup of coffee with the Bears, the Texans, and the Broncos. Uh, the Broncos released him on October the 19th, just a couple days ago. So that he's a former rugby player. He's a former Olympic weightlifter. Um, and the 49ers have signed him. So I don't, does that mean they're not happy with Brendel? Does that mean they're not happy with Nugent? Does that mean anything? Or is it just that they had some injuries? Um, they had lost Chris Hubbard and they wanted to add a player to the practice squad. And this is the guy they added. So um, we'll see what other news comes about. But um, there you go. Evan, Evan Eiselson, Eiselin, Eiselin. His name is Iselin, um, is the newest 49er. Also, the 49ers signed Malik Turner to the practice squad. Um, the wide receiver has been with the 49ers before. Also, the Niners promoted Evan Anderson, their big defensive tackle, the rookie from Florida Atlantic, from the practice squad to the active roster. Um, Anderson's been a revelation, man. I mean, he is strong. He's quick. Um, he's a really solid football player and a tremendous prospect. I mean, when you're 6'2", 325, and you can dunk a basketball, and you can move, I mean, he can pick it, pick up those feet and really move. Um, he, he's, in a lot of ways, he's a kind of a poor man's version of DJ Jones. And I only say that because DJ got broken off a huge contract with the Denver Broncos, and I, uh, Anderson is on his, on his rookie deal. But a lot of the same traits, a body type that really anchors well against the run inside, um, very, very strong at the point. I mean, DJ was the strongest Niner when he was here, and I think Anderson's probably the strongest Niner now. I'll say this. I don't know if he's the weight room strongest Niner, but he is functionally strong. And you can see it um, when you watch the film. He, 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 you know, if he gets combo blocked, he'll split it. Uh, he can stand up and maintain. He plays the game on his feet. He doesn't get knocked to the ground very easily. Um, he's got enormous strength in his lower body, so he can really anchor against the run. And usually guys who really anchor against the run can't move worth a damn, but this guy absolutely can, man. He can really move his feet. Um, so the Niners have something. I mean, that, that was, you know, when you think about um, all the different players that they picked up in this draft, are any of them as potentially as valuable as Anderson? I mean, I'm not even joking. Renardo Green's a good corner. Uh, Pooney's a nice starter at guard. Um, you know, Malik Mustafa looks to be a tremendous young safety prospect. But what we're talking about in Evan Anderson is a two-gapper run-stuffer who's got quick feet and can put heat on the quarterback. 
normally that's reserved for a day one or day two type pick. The fact that the Niners didn't get him in any round and signed him as an undrafted free agent and then have introduced him to their, in, you know, into their defense this year and only seen him produce at a very, very high level in a short amount of time. Very impressive player. And uh, I interviewed him last week. He's a good kid. So um, really excited about the potential for Evan Anderson uh, as a run defender, but even as an interior rusher. Uh, he's really, really exciting. ESPN's Dan Graziano and Jeremy Fowler did an article today talking about the trade deadline. And, of course, the big news of the day is that the Kansas City Chiefs traded a fifth-round draft choice um, for DeAndre Hopkins. So the Titans pick up a fifth-round pick, and DeAndre Hopkins now goes to KC to be their possession receiver. If you – people are like, oh, the Niners should have gotten DeAndre Hopkins. See, I don't – I don't – I don't – I, I – Receiving core, when you're talking about wide receivers, you know, what's a good pickup, what's not a good pickup? A good pickup for you is not a good pickup for me. A good pickup for me is not necessarily a good pickup for you. What do I mean by that? The Chiefs have Xavier Worthy. They have the field-stretching vertical threat, right? Um, with the injury to Juju Smith-Schuster, they, the, they need the chain mover. You know, they need somebody who can be a possession receiver. And they need somebody who can make some tough catches and move the chains. D-Hop can do that. He no longer can run the way he used to run, but they don't care about that. They've got Xavier Worthy to run off the top of the defense. So D-Hop is very much a complimentary addition for Kansas City. Well, Graziano and, and Fowler are writing this article that the Niners, they expect the 49ers to be active at the trade deadline. Um, in fact, San Francisco's got an extra third round draft choice in the 2025 draft. And they kind of referenced that as maybe that could be the pick that they wind up trading for a, a, a you know, significant addition. Uh, they have those two extra, they have two, one extra third round pick. They have two picks in the 2025 third round. Um, Graziano was quoted in the article as saying, I could see the 49ers potentially making a deal or two. And they really do need to make multiple deals. They have multiple needs. Um, in this article, they, they talked about receivers, and they talked about Christian Kirk, uh, Darius Slayton, uh, Deontay Johnson, Mike Williams, and they mentioned a name that has, has not been mentioned a whole lot, and it's an interesting one, and that's Jonathan Mingo. Um, Jonathan Mingo was a really good receiver at Ole Miss. He plays for the Carolina Panthers. His usage has gone absolutely fallen through the floorboards over the last four or five weeks. This guy played only 11 snaps this last week. So he's fallen out of favor in Carolina, and he, he's a receiver who's young with some size and some movement ability. So Mingo's an interesting guy. I would love to see him here. Um, the other guys I think also make sense. Deontay um, Johnson has been terrific throughout his career, and he's never played with a good quarterback. Imagine what he would do in this offense with this quarterback. And then Christian Kirk, there was a rumor yesterday the Niners had interest in Kirk. Darius Slayton is a name that I threw out. Slayton ran in the four threes coming out of college, and he's got size and he's healthy. He's playing good football right now. The New York Giants are going nowhere. How about a Darius Slayton-Aziz Ojolari combo coming from New York? I think that would be nice. Or how about a Christian Kirk... Devin Lloyd, Darnell Savage trio coming from Jacksonville. I and mean, if you could pick your trade, I'd probably pick that one, Jacksonville. Give me Darnell Savage, give me Devin Lloyd, and give me Christian Kirk, and I'll give you a third-round draft choice. I'll give you the Niners' extra third-round pick if you give me Christian Kirk, Darnell Savage, and Devin Lloyd. Savage would be the veteran on the back end, would help the Niners immeasurably. I mean, he is absolutely the perfect piece for them right now. Devin Lloyd would enable them to play, you know, to sit Campbell or cut Campbell and play guys like Winters and Graham off the bench. Um, watching Winters run out of bounds and watching, you know, Mahomes run 25 extra yards down the sideline in, uh, on Sunday was hard to stomach. But Christian Kirk is a vertical threat, runs in the 4-4s, always been fast going back to his days at A&M. Um, he can make plays. He's a vertical threat. I mean, he, he is absolutely would be a great choice. And then Savage and Lloyd would be fantastic additions to their defense. Um, one note on the Cowboys. Micah Parsons, according to the reports out of Dallas today, has high hopes that he'll be able to play Sunday night against the 49ers on national TV. He hurt the ankle against the New York Giants in week four. He's missed the last two games. But um, 
Parsons is saying that he'd like to get out there. So uh, that will be interesting to see if he's out there. Um, also, there's an incredible article from Mike Sando, um, and I read about the article on uh, Niners Nation, where he is quoting an NFL executive who says that the 49ers should consider trading Brock Purdy and trying to find a younger, cheaper quarterback to go forward with and trade Brock Purdy and, and uh, for draft choices, I would imagine. Um, I mean, I can't d disagree any stronger with those execs on that one. I mean, it was one exec who anonymously said maybe the smart move would be to trade Purdy and try to get more players that could help you win now. But Purdy's ready to play now. Um, the question is, do the Niners want to pay him, and how much do they pay him? But, I mean, if you're going to keep going down this road of we don't want to pay quarterbacks, we always want a quarterback on a rookie deal, you're going to have, you're not going to have continuity. Um, but I think the Niners, you know, if you see that article and you're thinking, well, you know, are you kidding me? You're trade Brock Purdy? But there could be some sentiment within the building that, hey, you had Sam Darnold and you could have kept Sam Darnold. And now Sam Darnold's in Minnesota playing really good football and you could have probably traded Brock Purdy and kept Sam Darnold and, and you know, built – built the team around Darnold and if they feel like they can build up reclamation reclamation project quarterbacks like a Baker Mayfield or a Sam Darnold who knows maybe Kyle Shanahan believes he could build Zach Wilson into something maybe they believe they could turn uh you know Justin Fields into something maybe there's a young quarterback you know I'll give you one example of a guy who you could probably get what if the 49ers called Jacksonville about Mac Jones all the talk about they wanted Mac Jones they wanted Mac Jones if they really want to go with a you know a quarterback, they don't want to pay Brock Purdy. Do you trade Brock Purdy and go with Mac Jones? I mean, it's like you got to be kidding me. But it does make you wonder what what that executive was thinking, suggesting that that the Niners should trade Purdy and go with a young quarterback. Do, is there rumblings around the league that Kyle Shanahan wants to give Zach Wilson a try? Um, it was an awful lot of speculation before that draft that Wilson wanted the Niners and that the Niners wanted Wilson. And, of course, he went number two to the Jets in front of them, and they never got a chance to pick him. And then he bombed in New York. Uh, now he's sitting the bench in Denver behind Bo Nix. I don't know. Very, very, very interesting, though, for sure. And today it has to be mentioned. Um, oh, by the way, CMC, according to Shanahan, um, is set to return to practice, but not until the bye week or after the bye week. So this week it's the Cowboys, then it's the bye week. So it sounds like CMC might be about three weeks off from playing maybe against Tampa coming out of the bye. We'll see. And, um, you know, it happens every single time the 49ers struggle. You see Dr. John York show up at practice, and sure enough, the 49ers are struggling. They're three and four. Who showed up at practice today? Dr. John York. So, you know, they say, who, who you know, the buck stops with uh, Jed. Jed's running the show. When the S hits the fan, the guy who shows up at practice is Dr. John York. Will it have an impact? I don't know. But I've seen it in past years, and I saw it again today. Whenever you get to a, to a mid-season point, where the team is struggling on the field, Dr. John York makes an appearance at a practice. He was at practice today. What does it mean? I don't know. But it does. it is interesting that every time they do struggle, you see uh, the speech pathologist. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show. Thanks to Mancini Sleep World for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.